looking around online, Amazon Automation is a brand new model. Not a lot of people have a lot of information about it. Back in November of 2018, I personally went searching. I couldn't find anything I needed in order to get started, so I took the leap of faith with full skepticism to do so. What I want to do in today's video is show you everything that I can possibly think of before you get started with Amazon Automation. Hey, hey, hey. Hey guys, my name is Patrick Kenny. Welcome back to my channel. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button and click that like button. That is your price and ticket to admission to this show today. What I want to talk about today is all of the information of getting started with Amazon Automation. All of this information will not pertain to any particular company. This is more as an FYI for you before you get started so that you can make a really good decision for yourself because nobody wants to put themselves in a financial bind or make a stupid decision when it comes to these investments. Now the first piece today that I wanna talk about is the actual model of Amazon automation. So let's head over to the whiteboard and talk a little bit about how this all actually works. So for the first segment of this video, I wanna talk about the model that we're using to make money. What it's called is drop shipping. If you've never heard of drop shipping, the major advantage to drop shipping is that we don't have any inventory, okay? That is the major advantage to the model. And so what we wanna focus on today is how does this all work? So I'm gonna give you a very simple example. We have Amazon, we have a customer, and we have a supplier, okay? Suppliers are what we use to actually source our products. This is where we're getting our product from. Our customers are our money makers, they're the ones spending the money. And Amazon is what we're selling on. So first things first, if we look at suppliers, suppliers are typically, in this model, retailers. US retailers, most likely. Things like Lowe's, Home Depot, Walmart, Best Buy, Target. These retailers typically have rollback and they also have bulk buys and they also have a lot of discounted items that have never taken effect on Amazon. So what I wanna to explain today is how this all works. So if we have a product, for the sake of today's example, we're gonna call it X. And our team has gone in and they have found this product on, uh, let's say, one of those retailer websites, you pick, whatever. They find that product and it costs $19.99. What they will do is they will go over to Amazon and they will see if they can find product X selling. And after some research, they will typically find that they can find the same exact product that is for sale at $19.99 on a retailer selling for something higher. Let's say for this example, $27.99 on Amazon.com. What they will then do is they will take the pictures of the product and they will post the pictures onto your Amazon store. Again, we don't own the inventory, it's just a picture. They will post it for $27.99 or maybe they go to $27.98 to be more competitive price-wise and be the lowest cost provider. And they will post all of these pictures. They will add the description. Okay, they'll add the you know terms of service, the, the shipping policies, refund terms, all that to the item. And they will post it for whatever, say $27.98 for this example. What they will then do is they will post it on your store and then say a customer comes along and the customer sends the money, AKA buys the item off of your Amazon store. He buys it for $27.98. What happens then is Amazon will update you that they just purchased it and you will then go and purchase it off of the retailer for say $19.99 or whatever. I'm just using this as an example. And then this retailer will send that item to the customer, okay? This whole circle is called drop shipping and this is how we are actually making the money in the model. We are having a customer that is buying an item from a supplier, I'm sorry, buying an item from Amazon and then our team is going and buying the item from the retailer. Good news about it 
is that we have no inventory. And secondly, the second part of this drop shipping equation is why is Amazon automation working? Well, take me for an example. I started in November of 2018, started shooting these YouTube videos to track my progress. Since then, I've done over a half a million dollars through this model. Good news about it is I haven't done any work. The Amazon automation model allows the team to do every aspect of it for you. They find the product, they price the product, they ship the product, they deal with returns, they deal with refunds, customer questions, the whole nine yards. You don't have to do any of this. And so as this scales and gets bigger, you sit back and watch the numbers get bigger. And that is why this model is working so well. Okay, so let's dive into the next topic in the video. So now that you guys know a lot about the model, how it works and how we're actually making money, I want to talk about my second part of this series, which is the cost of the investment. Now keep in mind, any of these Amazon automation companies, they're in a business. They're going to make money off of us and they're going to ask us to pay something up front. So the first question you want to ask them is what is your cost? Some will charge 20,000, some 30,000, some even 40,000 up front. Some are one time or some are annually fees and you need to figure out what that is and make sure that you know that first. Secondly, what you also have to understand is that these companies, at least everyone that I have seen, will charge you a commission split on the money that you're making as far as your store profits. For me personally, I went with a company that does charge a 70-30 profit split. That means that I keep 70% and they keep 30% off of my net profit. So that means after Amazon fees are taken out, that is after the cost of inventory and after any other shipping costs, taxes, etc., are taken out. Whatever is left over is actually split 70-30. Now, what we don't talk about a lot online is the other costs that are available, well, not available, but the other costs that I will actually accrue over the course of this investment. Number one is Amazon itself charges $39.99 to have an Amazon seller account per month. I don't see that too much because they take that charge out of my store profits, but you need to remember this just as the beginning is that it's gonna cost you $39.99 per month to get started with an Amazon account. Secondly, the other fee that uh, I have to pay is from a company called taxjar.com. What TaxJar does is it tracks all of my sales tax per state. Keep in mind that when you get started in Amazon automation, you're going to be asked to fill out tax exemption forms. The company that I went with does it for you, but some of these companies will make you do it yourself. When you do that on these tax exemption forms, what you're being exempt from is when you are buying the item for the purpose of reselling it, you don't pay tax. However, when you sell the item, say you're selling a chair and you have to collect a, uh, say a 7% sales tax, 7% actually goes to you as the seller. Tax jar will keep track of that and at the end of each quarter or annually, whatever the state requires, you're gonna be required to pay that to the state because you are collecting their sales tax. Now we'll talk about it in a little bit as well with the inventory part, but the third and final big part of the cost structure here is actually the cost of inventory. Keep in mind, and I've made a video on my channel about this, that you're gonna spend 40, 50, 70, 80, $100,000 per month on inventory. So you need to have credit available to do so. We'll talk about that a little bit later in today's video. Okay, so the third major part of this investment is the contract. First things first, if you're gonna be spending this much money with Amazon Automation, I would highly recommend I don't think it has to go without saying, I think you guys should already know this, but I would highly recommend you have a contract you're signing. If you're gonna be spending 20, 30, 40, I don't care what the number is, amount of dollars to anybody, especially online this day and age, you better have a contract saying that what you're paying for is what you're getting. So the company that I went with, actually the reason I went with them was their contract. One of the big selling points right now that I think really determines their significance in the marketplace is what they call a buyback clause. What a buyback clause does, it doesn't guarantee your results, but what it does do is it says that if within one year, 12 months of making the initial investment, you don't see a 30% return on that initial investment cost, they will buy back your store from you. So I'll give you an example. 
Right now, as you're watching this video, obviously when it's being recorded, I can't speak for the future if you're watching this in, in the future years for all I know. Right now, it costs $30,000 to get started with them. What they are saying is based on that, if you don't receive a 30% return off of that $30,000, meaning if you don't make at least $9,000 within 12 months, they will buy back your store at that $30,000 value. So let's say you only made $5,000 in net profit at the end of 12 months. They would say, okay, here's our cost of 30,000. We're gonna subtract 5,000. We will give you 25,000 to buy back your store. They take back the rights from your store, but you are getting, in that case, the funds that you spent back in the case that your store didn't do too well. I think that that's a very, very big part in decision-making for a lot of people because that significantly mitigates doesn't get rid of, but it definitely mitigates the risk for sure. All right, and your fourth topic on today's video, I wanna talk about expectations. This is the name of the game for you because what happens is a lot of people get in Amazon automation. They don't see the results that say my store has on day three, and they think that somehow they've done something wrong. So what I wanna show you today is kind of how this all works. So we're gonna go back to say plotting points in science or math class, and we're gonna talk about the time you've spent, say day zero, day 30, day 90, day 180, okay? And up here is gonna be your inventory. Okay, this is 10, 50, 100, 500, 1,000, all right? Now the reason I wanna share this with you is that your expectations need to be clear. When you first start, this Amazon business, you will start right here, day zero with no inventory, okay, zero inventory. If you have no inventory, obviously there's no sales. Every day, your, your automated team is gonna try to add, at least for the company that I personally went with, obviously it's dependent on the company, they try to add two to three new products per day. And so, as you grow, say after 30 days at two products, you're gonna be up to about 60 products. And so as you grow, your inventory will grow. As your store is open for longer, you're gonna be adding more inventory. Inventory is just simply those pictures we talked about in the first segment, okay, where we have those pictures of those items. The more inventory, the more possibilities there are for your customer to buy from your store. For me, I started at zero, and right now I have over 800 items in my inventory. It might even be as high as 900, I haven't checked in a few days, but it's around that area. That has enabled me to have a lot more options for the customer. Think about it this way. If you were to walk into a grocery store and one grocery store had five items in it and one grocery store had a thousand items in it, which grocery store do you think is gonna have the better likelihood that is gonna have your item that you're searching for? The one with a thousand items in it. It's no different with your store. These first 90 days are crucial, okay? This is your beginner period, all right? You're a new seller. They actually call this a new seller period. In here, this is where your expectations need to be set. Not much is gonna happen. Those first 90 days, Amazon is monitoring you as a new seller and they're actually notifying guests that are coming to your store as customers and letting them know that you're a new seller via a new seller badge. It'll actually say that this is a new seller. If you were a shopper, think about this real quick. If you were a shopper and you were to go on Amazon and find a product you like, one is it's from two different sellers, same product. One is a new seller that says this is a new seller and one has a lot of reviews. Which one are you more prone to buy from? Typically, most people are more prone to buy from a seller that has a bunch of reviews and people know, like, and trust them. No different here. So these first 90 days, you're gonna have that new seller tab and it's probably going to make your sales not as high as you'd probably like. So those first 90 days, don't expect too much. From there, you just have to let the store, stay, the store scale. It's not a matter of if these things are gonna sell, it's when. It might be day 90, it might be day 180, for me, it happened around month six that it really took off. I was really starting to see numbers come in. Here we are in month eight, month nine, we're doing about $100,000 per month, give or take. It's taken that long to get here. 
obviously it's going to continue to progress into the future. And that is what you need to know as far as what expectations you should have with this business. All right, so now that we know about our expectations, I want to talk about suspensions, deactivations. These are the horror words and the horror stories revolved around Amazon automation. This is something that you must know happens with the business. Now, knock on wood, for me personally, my store at this point in time as I'm shooting this video has never been suspended, it's never had issues, it's never been deactivated. However, I have seen clients from all sorts of companies, it doesn't matter what company it is, I have seen people get suspended. What do I know about it? Well, frankly, I'm just a customer, so I don't know too much about it, but what I do know is that suspensions are less severe than deactivation. A suspension might just need some sort of response in email format to Amazon saying, yes, this is what I'm selling, here's my invoices, and all the information that Amazon requests. Suspensions typically are not taking more than a few weeks to resolve and get accounts back up. However, what if a suspension leads to deactivation or we get right into deactivation, AKA being banned from Amazon? What if I can no longer sell from Amazon? That was a big question that I had when I was getting started and I made sure to peg that point home to anybody I searched for when I was looking for the best automation provider. And one of the answers that came to me from a specific company that I actually ended up going with was that they have what are called stealth accounts. And a stealth account is like a backup account that is already mature, that has already been open for over 90 days. It has gone through that beginning process, that beginning newbie process as I like to call it. And that information from your original store would be transferred into the stealth account so that you could get back up and running. For me personally, when I looked at this investment, being deactivated was my biggest worry. Some of the companies in their contracts, it says if you are deactivated, you no longer have a store with them. With that said, when we talk about this company, their deactivation policy leads to a stealth account. With the stealth account, I can get it back. I can get my store back. So when I looked at it, I'm never gonna be a guy that invests $30,000 and doesn't have a store. I'll always have a store coming and that's what I wanted to see. For segment number six, I wanna talk about inventory spending. This is the part that I think a lot of the Amazon companies tend to kind of forget to tell you about because of course they're in the business to get you as one of their clients and they don't want to tell you that you might not be able to even do this. So let me talk about this. Your credit card limit is so important. What I want you to do right now is as you're watching this video in your head, think about what your credit card limit is. If you said something like 2000, 5000, 7000, 10,000, Leave, this is not for you probably. I don't mean that in a rude way. Don't waste your time. The more credit card, of, the more of a credit card limit you have, the higher that is, the more money you can make. And the reason that that is, is because Amazon only pays you out every two weeks. So we have a two week wait period to get our money. And so, when we get a purchaser, a customer comes and purchases an item from our store, our team will use our credit cards to go pay for the item. But it can be two weeks or even higher, minimum two weeks, it could be even more because they do hold even some every two weeks as well on an unavailable balance, that's a whole nother video. But what are you gonna do if you were to max out your credit card and you have more orders coming in? You've run into a cash flow issue. And so what you want to be sure is that you have a high credit card limit. Now, you're probably looking, Patrick, I need a number. So think about a goal. What is your goal of a store? Some might say, well, the goal of my store is 100K per month. That's great. Divide this number by two. What are you left with? 50K. That's your ideal credit limit. What you want to do is think of your goal Divide the number by two. Of course, the goal is monthly. That is what credit card limit you should have. That can come in the form of one or multiple. Just make sure that all the multiple credit cards have the same exact name. So for me, it should be Patrick Kenny, Patrick Kenny, Patrick Kenny, Patrick Kenny. It can't be Patrick Kenny and you know so-and-so, so-and-so different people. It's gotta be the same person. 
For me personally, I use all American Express cards, so I just call them up and have them put all of my limit that they can onto one card, so I keep everything on one card. This right here is the major factor in the business. The more credit card cap you have, the more money you can make with the business. All right, so leading now into number seven is credit cards. This is my favorite topic because this is what has enabled me to travel for free. Before you get started with Amazon Automation, what you need to think about is what credit card are you going to use? First things first, are you a traveler or do you want cash back? You have to figure that out first before you start doing this. I personally love to travel, so I went and found a Delta Airlines Platinum American Express card. Again, I just shot a video on this showing that I gained 75,000 sky miles in a month because I spent $75,000 with this Amazon automation business. And the reason this is important is this allows me to travel for free. And so you need to think, am I gonna travel a lot or get cash back? Typical cards, what I would recommend is to try to find at least a 2% cash back card. And traveling cards, I have no other recommendation other than marry your airline, put a ring on it, meaning be loyal to your airline. So when you figure out the card you're gonna use, for me it was Delta, for you it might be United, American, I don't know what you guys fly, whatever it is, make sure that you're using that airline only and make sure that you're racking all these points with your Amazon automation spending on that card. The reason that we do this is that those airlines reward loyalty with different classes. So in, in Delta, they call them medallion status. You can have a silver, a gold, a platinum, a diamond medallion status, which enables you to get free upgrades to first class based off of just buying a basic economy ticket. And this is huge for me, that travels a lot. So be sure to be looking at that. I'd recommend just going on Google and looking up best cashback cards, or of course, whatever airline you're using, say Delta, Delta credit cards, and we'll pull them up on Google for you. Take a look. So now that you learned all about inventory spend and credit cards and how I finagle for free travel, I wanna talk about a credit solution that I personally found online. First things first, don't think that this is a plug by any, any means. I don't have an affiliate link for this. You can just look it up. But I personally only have a $15,000 credit limit. If you've been watching my YouTube channel, you've seen that I've done over $100,000 per month with my business as of late. So I already talked to you guys about, I need to divide my goal, 100,000 divided by two, which would be 50,000. That's how much I would need in order to do that. But I only have 15,000. So you might be asking, how do I do that? Well, traditionally you have your Amazon account, and then you have your bank account. And every two weeks, Amazon sends you money. And that is why you need credit. Well, my store was doing really well. It grew really fast. And my store outgrew my credit line, a typical cash flow issue. So what I had to do is I had to go online and try to find a solution. And I found a solution called Payability, okay? Payability right here, you can Google that word. That's payability, they have a website and you can research all about them. First things first, before I talk about this, you will need three months of selling history, doing at least $2,000 per month to be eligible to even start with payability, so get that out of the way first. But here's what payability does. Payability takes away the link between your Amazon account and your bank account. And now your Amazon account is gonna pay payability every two weeks. What payability does is they then forward you portions of what they're expecting to get paid daily. What this allows me to do is this allows me to get paid every day, pay off my card every day so that this becomes one full cash flow cycle. Payability is paying me every day. I'm then paying my card every day, my Amazon sales are growing every day, and it's nonstop. I never have a cash flow issue. So for those of you guys with low credit limits, like myself, this may be an option, not a requirement, just a thought. There's plenty of people that actually, frankly, don't like this company, and they talk crap about this company. I'm just being honest, if you search online, you might find some people that don't like it, because they do charge a 2% fee on gross transactions. And so some people don't like that. But for me, when I look at this, my store on just a credit line 
of 15,000 might be able to handle about $30,000 per month. My store right now is doing about $100,000 a month with payability. Would you rather have a store doing 30,000 or 100,000? That's my rationale, that's why I went with payability. So hopefully this segment helps you out a lot. Okay, okay, so now that we've gotten credit cards and payability out of the way, I wanna talk about cash back now outside of credit cards. For me, the number one cash back site I use is Be Frugal. I will leave a link in the description down below, by the way, so you guys can get a free $10 out of Be Frugal before you even start on Amazon Automation. Whoever you're going with, one of the things some of these companies do is they actually split your cash back profit. I found a company that does not split it. I like that a lot better because right now Be Frugal is making me anywhere from $650 to $800 per month in just cash back checks. And that comes literally to my mailbox. I've made a video about it. That'll come to my mailbox where I actually have that check and cash it. I can use it for what I want. Be Frugal is basically a 1% cash back site. They find discrepancies in price and they also work as an affiliate for major retailers that we are using as our suppliers. And so every single time I'm spending money, say last month I spent $75,000, that 1% means that I'll make 750 bucks just off Be Frugal. Let me say that one more time. I'm making six to $800 a month just off of Be Frugal. That's not even profit. That's not credit card points. That's just Be Frugal. That is a massive bonus. So you wanna have it on your store. Whoever's providing your store doesn't matter. You want to have Be Frugal. Be sure to look it up. Again, I'll have a link in the description to get a free 10 bucks anyway to sign up. Now, I know that we've talked about a lot of stuff. These are all the things I can think of right now for you guys. But before I end this video, I want to talk about your exit strategy. Keep in mind that when you have a business like this and it is generating big sales, you have a chance to exit if you so choose. Right now, I have a store that is making between six and $10,000 per month in net profit after spending money on inventory, fees, and commission split with the team. An investor may be willing to spend more than I spent on the initial fee to have my store. So what you need to think about is of course, structure your LLC correctly so that you can do this. Because what if 18 months down the road, you've got a store that is generating over a million dollars a year in gross sales. You find an investor that doesn't want to start. They don't want to wait those first 90 days. They want to initially right away, get into the money. You can get them your store for a fee and transfer the rights inside of a company. I want you to think about that before you get started as well and ask whoever you're thinking about going with, ask them if this is possible and if there's fees attached with transferring the rights of the store inside of the company. That way you can think about what is my exit strategy. It might not be 18 months, it might be 24, 36, 72, 100. I don't know when it is for you, but think about this because it's a legitimate business that you've scaled and you can now sell. With all of this said, I hope that this video helped you a lot. Again, click the subscribe button, click the like button, and down below, I have a link, and you can book a call with me if you really wanna know who I personally went with that has enabled me in the first nine months of this business to make over a half a million dollars in sales, not profit, in sales, and make on autopilot all of this money, travel for free, all that cash back funds, They've been great to me. So again, click the link in the description so you can book a call with me. I appreciate your time today's video. Be on the lookout for the next one. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Peace.